do scammers picking Tonka Kiki readings on the package? We can finally get started on the project. Eh, eh, eh. Tu tat solo? Hey Star Wars fans, Happy Trooper here with another prop build. In this episode, we'll help Greedo build the Battlefront version of the DT-12 Heavy Blaster Pistol. For the foundation of the blaster, we'll be using the KJ Works MK-1 Airsoft Pistol. If you have access to a 3D printer, the DT-12 accessory files can be obtained for free from Thingiverse.com. If you do not have access to a 3D printer, you can purchase the pieces from shapeways.com. Other accessories that are recommended are a metal coat hanger, an old network cable, and two PL259 UG175 reducers. The following tools and materials were used to construct the blaster. A flathead screwdriver, a 1.5mm hex key, abrasives from 120 to 400 grit, adhesives of your choice, one part filler putty, auto filler primer spray, various colors of spray paint, and a rotary tool is optional but helpful. A list of the materials can be found in the description below. As always, feel free to change any of the tools, methods, and materials to construct your blaster. Throughout the project, the DT12 photo on wikipedia.com will be used as a reference for accessory placement and color. Before getting started, I would like to give a big Empire salute to Straker, who has provided us with a fully printable DT-12, available on Thingiverse.com. You may be asking yourself if the entire weapon can be 3D printed, why is an airsoft pistol being used in this project? In the true spirit of Star Wars, I chose to use an existing weapon and add accessories just like the prop builders from A New Hope. While it is a little more expensive to go this route, you will have less printing, sanding, and painting, it will look more authentic, and it will have a nice weight to it. I have taken some of Straker's files and remixed them to fit on the KJ Works MK1 pistol. I have also designed a few additional 3D printed parts. The files that remained untouched from Straker are the two pulley greeblies on the grips, the two stylus on the sides of the blaster, the power twinkie on the cartridge ejection port, and the rear end cap. I have made the following changes to Straker's files. The flash hider and nozzle have been enlarged by 1.16% to fit over the KJ Works barrel. I also hollowed out the sight antenna pieces with a 3mm hole so that the coat hanger wire can be inserted. Lastly, three new pieces were created. Those parts are an extension for the lower power Twinkie to give it a more secure connection to the cartridge ejection port, an extension to help the nozzle stick out from the flash hider, and a taper ring for the barrel. Remove any support material from the prints. Carefully clip off the sight antenna end pieces. Sand off any remaining supports on the flash hider with the rotary tool. Sandpaper wrapped around a pipe can also be used. Secure the two halves of the flash hider with adhesive. I'm using SCI grip number 16, an adhesive that works very well with plastics. Clamp the halves together to form a secure bond. Measure approximately 12 centimeters of a straight area on the coat hanger and cut with a rotary tool. In the absence of a rotary tool, a hacksaw may be used. 
Using some emery cloth, sand off the plastic coating and smooth out any rough edges on the coat hanger piece. Go over each item with 220 grit sandpaper to remove the ridges. If you have any rough areas, move down to 120 grit sandpaper. Some of the printed items are small and may require sanding twigs or files to reach all areas. To finish up this phase of the project, let's secure the two UG175 connectors. I used a small piece of network cable for internal support. You may also use a wooden dowel or other object. I cut the cable to approximately 2 centimeters. To get a quick bond, I placed some super glue gel on one end of the network cable and placed it inside one of the UG175 connectors. Put some more gel on the other end of the cable and then place the other UG175 connector on the end. Secure this piece with a clamp to ensure a good bond. There are a few ways to smooth out your 3D prints. The method that I use requires some effort, but the results are worth the time spent prepping PLA prints. Wear some latex or vinyl gloves to spread a layer of one part filler putty over the 3D printed parts. Allow the putty to dry thoroughly and then sand off the excess with 220 grit sandpaper. Clean off any excess particles with compressed air and a tack cloth. Spray the 3D printed components with auto filler primer. Keep the can moving when spraying the parts and use multiple light coats. The filler primer should aid in filling in the ridges. After the primer is dry, sand with 220 grit. If you can still see or feel ridges, repeat the putty process and spray with filler primer once again. After you are satisfied, finish sanding with 400 grit sandpaper. To prepare for modification and painting of the pistol components, the first step is to field strip the weapon. Use the enclosed procedures from KJ Works. Remove the grip screws with a flathead screwdriver. Remove the barrel using a 1.5mm hex key. Lift the lever on the rear side of the grip to finish disassembly. Removing the front sight is optional, but helps free up space when measuring the cut line to shorten the barrel. Use the 1.5mm hex key or a jeweler's screwdriver to push the small pin out of the front sight. The rear sight can be removed by simply sliding it to the left or right. It is not secured with a screw. Measure approximately 6mm back from the front sight hole. Mark the cut line with a piece of tape. Use a rotary tool or hacksaw to remove the front tip of the barrel. To simulate the ring taper on the Ruger MK1, you can use the 3D printed STL file or a 1cm by 6.7cm piece of aluminum sheet cut with some tin snips. You can also use 8 pieces of foil tape with the same dimensions. The barrel of the pistol is the same diameter as quarter inch PVC pipe. To prevent scratching, I wrap the aluminum piece around the PVC pipe to get it to bend evenly. To finish the job, I used a hose clamp to tighten it down. I then sanded the barrel with 400 grit sandpaper both to help the adhesive and prep for painting. A pencil line was marked on the barrel where the body of the pistol meets the barrel. This line marks the edge of the ring piece. Using E6000 adhesive, secure the ring piece to the barrel. If you are using a metal ring, use a hose clamp to keep it in place. If you are using the 3D printed ring, tape will suffice. E6000 has a 24 hour drying time, so you have time to get the correct placement. You can also place the barrel back on the grip assembly to get your alignment right. E6000 will not harm the plastic barrel. Any excess can be easily removed after it dries. 
After the ring has dried, sand all of the barrel components with 400 grit sandpaper. This will remove the sheen from the plastic and give better paint adhesion. A scuffing pad was used to give the grips a thorough sanding. Prior to spray painting, remove any debris with compressed air and some tack cloth. To get warmed up, spray the grips with some espresso paint and set them aside. Next, spray the barrel components with some dark metallic spray. Once the paint is cured, apply some matte clear coat to take down the shine. If you've watched other Happy Trooper videos, you can opt for a graphite powder finish. This is done by spraying the parts with flat black spray, rubbing the components with fine steel wool, brushing on graphite powder with a brush, and sealing it with a satin clear coat. Here is a comparison of the finishes. The blaster on the top has dark metallic spray, while the bottom has a graphite powder finish. The side pieces will be sprayed with gloss black. Let the gloss cure for a few days. I applied all clad chrome with an airbrush to simulate metal. Not everyone has an airbrush on hand. Metallic spray can also be used. I still recommend having a gloss black undercoat. Simulating metal requires an ultra smooth surface. The remaining pieces will be sprayed with flat black. To simulate some grime and give your pieces some depth, apply some watered down black acrylic paint to the grips. You can also apply black acrylic paint to the UG175 components. Seal the flat black parts and grips with a flat clear coat to help protect the paint. Sealing the UG175 metal connectors is not recommended. To weather the other pieces, dip the tip of a paintbrush into some tester silver enamel paint. Wipe off all of the paint on a paper towel. Gently dry brush the edges of the components to give it a worn metal appearance. To mix it up, I applied some bronze onto the nozzle of the blaster. Before getting started, let's talk about adhesives. When I need to secure a plastic on plastic connection without any paint in the way, I like to use SCI grip number 16. If I am securing two different types of material and need a very strong bond, I lean towards E6000. Even though the side pieces are technically plastic on plastic, the fit is not snug, so I opted to use E6000 here. Sand the ends of the stylus, apply some E6000, and let it work its magic.
To secure the UG-175 assembly to the power Twinkie, I marked the connection area with a pencil and then lightly sanded the connection point in hopes that the rough surface will get a nice bond with the adhesive. Put a little bit of E6000 on the sanded areas and put the UG-175 assembly in place. To secure the sight antenna component, place some E6000 on the coat hanger and slide the main antenna mount to the middle of the hanger. Use some more E6000 to secure the end pieces. Let all of these pieces cure for 24 hours. If you look closely at the DT-12, the nozzle protrudes from the flash hider. The nozzle requires a boost to get that protrusion. The 3D printed nozzle extender piece provided the 3mm elevation needed to get the nozzle to stick out a bit. I used SCI Grip 16 to secure the extension piece to the nozzle. Because of the plastic to paint connection, I used E6000 to secure the elevated nozzle inside the flash hider. The end cap was secured by sanding the connection point and using SCI Grip 16. The Power Twinkie and UG-175 assembly does not have a good connection point to the cartridge ejection port of the pistol, so a connection point was created. Using SCI Grip 16, fasten the 3D printed rectangle extension to the underside of the Power Twinkie assembly. The rear sight notch needs to be filed down flush with the flat part of the sight. The coat hanger rides a little low, so it is necessary to shave this out with a file or rotary tool. We made it to the final stage of the project. Let's get this blaster assembled. Make one rotation around the end of the barrel with some friction tape. Carefully twist the flash hider. If it is too tight, you have too much tape on and you may separate the two halves of the flash hider. Slide the rear sight into place. Use E6000 to secure the side piece, tape it in place, and let it set for a few hours. Secure the pulley piece to the grip using E6000. Let this set for a few hours. Repeat the last two steps for the other side of the blaster. Place the sight antenna assembly on top of the barrel and mark its position with a pencil. Gently sand the connection point. Do not attach the sight antenna yet. Apply some E6000 to the power Twinkie assembly and fasten it to the cartridge ejection port of the pistol. Use tape to hold it in place. For the final piece, use some SCI grip to secure the sight antenna assembly to the top of the pistol. Rig up a stand so that your blaster remains stationary while the bond sets.
Help a sand trooper out and give me a like. Or better yet, click the subscription button below.